Hey, good morning, options traders. What's happening, everybody? Well, here's another good tip for all of the traders in our group, and that is about the strike price and the gamma connection. As you can imagine, all of your Greeks and strikes and stock prices and time are all connected. But some of these relationships are really important to understand for various strategies and probably most important that you don't get caught with unexpected surprises. There's one thing that you don't want in the world of investing and options trading is unexpected surprises. So what is the connection between the strike price of your option and gamma? Well, first we have to back up a little bit and talk more about a previous topic on stock price movement. Remember that stock prices move in percentages. And what I mean by that is a $1 move is more likely in a $100 stock compared to a $10 stock. And anybody who's observed the markets for any length of time certainly knows this is true. We see very large dollar changes in stocks like a Tesla or an Amazon, very expensive stocks, or a Berkshire Hathaway Class A versus something that's like a penny stock. You just don't get very big price changes in the cheap stocks, but they can all move in the same percentages. Now, volatility shows the percentage that a stock price can move in a given time and generally, volatility is reported as an annualized number. If you wish to scale it into a different time frame, there is a technique. And yes, there is a video in the same forum showing you how to scale volatility. But for this video, I'm just going to be talking about volatility as an annualized number over the course of a year. Just make it a little easier to follow. So if we have a volatility number, remember that stock price changes fall into this bell curve. And there's a little statistical rule called the empirical rule. And what it says is that no matter what shape of a bell curve that you have, about 68% of your data is going to fall in the center part here in the blue, called a one standard deviation mark. And about 95% of your data will fall within two standard deviations, which is this blue plus the gray. And then finally, almost all of your data, about 99.7% is going to fall within three standard deviations. Now, if we know this information, we can use it to interpret volatility. So let's say that we have a $100 stock trading at 20% volatility. A one standard deviation move is just the 20% volatility figure times our stock price. So we know that a one standard deviation move in terms of dollars is 20 bucks. So now just go and apply your empirical rule. There's a 68% chance that the stock will be somewhere between 80 and 120 in a year. That's just the current stock price of 100 plus or minus one standard deviation. And if you remember from the slide we just saw, 68% of the time, the stock will be in that center area, in that one standard deviation mark. So it's a different way of interpreting it. We can just say, therefore, for this given stock, there's a 68% chance that will be somewhere in this range in a year. Now, if a one standard deviation move is 20 bucks, two standard deviations is 40. So if we want to see what's going to happen with more confidence, I could say that this $100 stock is probably going to be between 60 and 140 in a year, but I now have 95% confidence in that prediction because that's two standard deviations. And then finally, if we want to look at the third standard deviation, we just take three times 20, which is 60, and we add it and subtract it to our current stock price, we get a range of 40 to 160. But now I'm almost 100% certain that this $100 stock will fall somewhere in this range within a year. Now it's important to understand that when we make these predictions, this is talking just about volatility. It's not talking about mergers, acquisitions, and buyouts, and anything else that can move a stock price. It's saying that the only thing that's affecting it is this volatility. All right, so now that you understand this relationship, what do you suppose would happen if we doubled our stock price from 100 to 200? Well, it's pretty obvious that a one standard deviation move is now going to double from 20 to 40. So now we just apply the same rules, but to a $200 stock. I can say there's a 68% chance the stock will be somewhere between 160 and 240. 95% chance somewhere between 120 and 280, and virtually 100% chance that it will be somewhere between 80 
and 320. So notice that when we doubled the stock price, we kept the volatility the same, that these ranges just start getting a lot wider. So let's go back and compare them now. So up on top is our $100 stock, and our one standard deviation range is between 80 and 120. Notice when we double the stock price, that range goes from 160 to 240, exactly double. But the percentage is the same. See, they both move 20%, but we just got a wider range for the $200 stock. And that's going to be true for all of them. If we go to the 95% confidence interval right here, we have 60 to 140 for the $100 stock. We've got 120 to 280, exactly double. So this is going to drive this stock price gamma relationship. So here's what it looks like graphically. So here we're looking at two bell curves. And let's say that the red one is for a $100 stock and the blue one is for a $200 stock. Remember that the center of the bell curve represents the current stock's price. So once again, if this is a $100 stock, it's just saying that this is kind of the maximum range we would expect strictly from volatility. But look what happens if we double the stock price to 200. Do you see how it's gotten a lot wider? In fact, it's gotten twice as wide. And that means that our bell curve had to get squashed down here in half. So here's really the most important thing to remember from this video. If you double the strike, you're going to have half the gamma. So if you go from a $100 strike to a 200, the gamma gets cut in half. And of course, if you half the strike, you're going to double the gamma. This is the relationship that you have to understand. So what does that also tell you? Well, let's say that you have 10 $100 calls and you've got a certain gamma. And let's just say that you've got everything else the same, but you're now trading a $200 call. Well, if you have 20 of those $200 calls, you will have the same gamma. Why? Because you've doubled the number of contracts, but you've also cut your gamma in half. So the overall gamma of your position will remain the same. So as I've talked about in a previous video about stock splits, this is one of the many reasons you have to understand this connection. If your stock goes through a split, especially a significant one, a five for one or a seven for one, that your gamma can explode in value. And I talked about this with the recent Apple split, seven for one split. Your gamma is going to go up tremendously, and especially if it's a short-term option. And if you're not looking at this on your platform or understanding what it means, you might get kind of complacent and say, ah, oh, you know, if the stock moves a dollar, my position only moves so much. Well, now in that same dollar move, it's going to be radically different, whether for better or for worse. And that's because gamma is showing you the rate of change of those deltas. So you absolutely have to understand this strike and gamma connection. If you double your strike, you're going to cut your gamma in half. So this is an important relationship to succeed with options trading. And I hope this video has helped you to understand why there's a very specific link between your strike price and your gamma. For anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.